Hello, welcome back to Pick Your Brain. I'm so excited for this episode. It's really, really special. First of all, it's we're just at the start of Pride Month. Hello, and um, so and so just, just so many things happening, even if we're all in lockdown and stuck in our own homes, um, people are still getting really connected to each other in one way, shape, or form. And I'm, I didn't plan this, but then I think this is a perfect Pride episode. Um, to have two amazingly gorgeous men uh, to talk about their amazingly gorgeous talent and what they have to share to the industry out here. And I've, I've worked with one of them um, closely for almost a year until COVID bitch uh, cut our contract short. Um, but I was such a fan of this guy. Um, I thought his leadership was just amazing and he's just, good vibes and a great guy to have on tour or to be following on tour especially he, he's a, he was our assistant dance captain the other guy i've been a fan of from afar um never got to work with him yet maybe in the in the far future but we find a lot of things in common friends as well our passion for fitness and i was supposed to go into a show that this summer that he had just exited um last summer um and we can talk about more about that later but just my thing you know what just a little bit of an introduction while more people come in to sign in and watch this whole thing look we're six months in um we're six months in in 2020 and the fact of the matter is 2020 sucks that that's without question 2020 the year is really sucky broadway just announced that none of the shows are going to come back until next year so it's closed and Broadway's gonna go dark. I think this is the longest that it's gone dark in history. Um, it didn't even go this dark after 9-11 happened. Um, this dark for this long after 9-11 happened. So this is pretty historic. And out here in the UK, government's still pretty vague and quiet and, and awkwardly silent about, about the support that the theater industry needs. Um, so many companies are already doing these redundancy consultations, which is really quite scary. Panto, which is a big deal uh, in the UK, which pretty much bankrolls the rest of the year for a lot of the theater companies in the theater and the and the theaters, um, is on a threat of not having to exist at all this year, which is really, really scary. And all we get right now is this weird five uh, roadmap, five step roadmap to bringing back the theaters into in, into you know our systems and and and, and um, bringing back the shows into into the theaters which is really really weird and really frustrating so what i decided to do is just not focus on anything that i can't control i can't control that i'm angry yes i can sign petitions and i have i'm going to join the protests and i will coming up soon for the culture and the arts protest but what i can do for the rest of the 6 months knowing that 2020 is going to suck is make more memories, make more memories that I'm going to be able to hold on to um, and remember the little good things that 2020 brought, like this one, for example, like getting to talk and pick the brains of two guys I truly respect. And in any other situation outside of COVID, I don't know if I would have gotten to know them in the way I'm about to get to know them today. And I'm so glad I get to share this with all of you. Two amazing and talented and beautiful human beings. Please join me in welcoming as I pick the and welcoming these guys as I pick the brains of Felipe Bejarano. Say that right, right? Say you that did. right, yeah. You're drinking. I was getting a bit of H2, you know, a bit of squash. <laughs> <laughs> and and Nick Len. What's up, guys? Uh, hi. hi. Sorry, like that, was my, that was my really long and o overdrawn and quite dramatic intro to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me, boys. I feel it's the longest intro I've ever had. I feel like, I feel like a star. Yeah, you I'm, are a star. I'm not going to lie. I won't be honest. Always <laughs> <laughs> like that for me, and then I'll play it to myself every day when I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not going to be recorded anyway and played back on the YouTube channel. <laughs> but before, before anything else, um, Felipe, w w let me introduce you guys to the people watching. And there's so many people watching right now, 11 total. Um, <laughs> I just want to introduce you guys. Where were you guys or what were you doing right before or when COVID hit? 
Nick. Oh, yeah. Nick, Nick, take it away. Yeah, you go first. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was on tour with you, JP, actually. We were in Liverpool and all the news was kind of happening. And then we were still doing the shows and then we weren't sure, sure whether it was going to go ahead or not go ahead. And then every day it was just like, the theatres are going to close, the theatres are going to close. And we were like, no, please, please, <laughs> please don't. Mm. And then it just went, boom. We got yeah. that email in the morning. We did a show the night before. Right. We went home. Uh, and then we got an email and kind of said, you've got four hours to get your um, stuff out of the dressing <laughs> room. <laughs> get your Get your stuff out of the out of the dress. Yeah, yeah. get out because uh, they're gonna oh. the theater, and then yeah, go home basically and wait until you're told. And we were like, oh yeah, it'll be like a week, and then we'll get all our stuff, and then we'll go back. But Miss Rona had other plans. <laughs> Miss Rona had other plans, and and mind you, we were on tour, so a lot of people had given up their digs in London because mm. the whole year was set up. To, yeah. to be on tour. A lot of us are internationals uh, from Japan, from Malaysia, Singapore, all over the world. So mm -hmm. things were not really planned out to just go home, pack your bags and go home immediately. No, so <laughs> it was really quite shocking. How about you, Felipe? Where were you? You were in Prince of Egypt. Yes, yeah, we finished warm up and we generally thought it was gonna be a show. Um, but it's kind of like Nick said, it was a bit of like a roulette, guessing roulette whether when in that week, the week of the 16th of March, when um, we were going to be halted, I guess, because we knew it was going to happen. Um, yeah. So that, that even if there was, for example, a limit of like 500 people, Dominion's got like 2,000 plus. Um, so I knew long that, I knew that week um, we were going to get stopped, but didn't know it was on the Monday. So we finished warm up, and then our producer came on stage and told us that um, it wasn't going to go ahead. Yeah, and it was just a weird, weird feeling. It was, it was weird. It's 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 not even like you're not completely sad yet because you you haven't processed things yet. It's more like it, it hits also, you. In the shock. You know how long for it's. Mm. Do you kind of see what I mean? I guess now that we're so far into it, we we have, I guess more of an idea, even though it's still somewhat clouded. Right. Uh, but at the time, I genuinely thought it was going to be about three weeks. Yeah. I yeah. left my cat there. I left some plants there at the yeah. theater, um, which I then went to get back like two or three days later. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, but so, what 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 have you guys been doing throughout this whole lockdown, which has been extended and extended and extended? My garden, genuinely, my garden. yes, yes. I, I see that it's a beautiful garden. Yeah, we grew some lawn, um, my housemates and I. Um, we all kind of got out there every single day. Just I bought a pool as well, a swimming pool, because we can't go abroad. But we bring the pub and um, the beach to us here in Morton. Did you have Did you have plans for a summer holiday outside of the UK? Um, I wanted to. I hadn't booked one yet. Actually, no, I did. I did. I booked a um, holiday surprise for Alice for her birthday. We had Switzerland and we couldn't go. It wasn't a summer holiday. It was in March. We'll go. <laughs> how about you, Nick? You how about you and Patrick? How how have you been coping? Yeah, do you know what? It's it's um it's actually been really good. Uh so Patrick's on Book of Mormon tour. Yeah. And so I've been away as well. And you know, with it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow for four years. And it's kind of just made me think like we're 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 back living together yeah. every single day again. <laughs> Like 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 a normal couple would be, and yeah. it's because we've never had that before. We've always been away, or one person's been away, and we've always had to travel. So it's uh, it's actually just been nice to just spend some quality time together without being like, oh, in two weeks I'm gonna have to go here, or do you know what yeah. I mean? Or FaceTime yeah. every two seconds. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's just been a lot of like house stuff. Really, we're getting a puppy on Saturday, which no. is. I know that's amazing. I know that's another thing, and we've always wanted a, like a puppy. It's not like a lockdown puppy; like it's a like. <laughs> What's a lockdown puppy? What do you mean? Well, lots of people are like I want to get a puppy, and then it's like, have you actually thought about when lockdown's right. done? You look after the, right. you know. Uh, 
going to get. Other than that, just like home workouts, been going out to the park. I've never been outside so much right. either. It's, 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 I know it's a terrible thing that's happening, but we've really tried to find the best, best of it. Otherwise, I, I would actually go mental. Yeah, um, you, you have to pick out the good stuff because that's what you're going to go back to after when we're done with 2020. Yeah. You're going to have to go back to the good stuff. Have you guys realized anything about yourself um, as a person? There's a little bit deep early on in the in the podcast, but have you guys realized anything about yourself throughout this whole lockdown and this silence and this quarantine? I initially panicked um, at the thought of just being stuck indoors for a long time. Mm -hmm. But my bedroom isn't the, the biggest place. Um, however, I, I had to kind of just let things go and take it day by day. Because yeah. um, I found that if, if I thought, all oh, right, well, this is week two and I'm already bored, I don't know how long that's going to be. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what we, we, day 100 of quarantine today, day 100. I'm actually doing okay. I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing major. Right. Uh, <laughs> nothing major. A roof over my head. So life could be a lot more. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Nick? I mean, you kind of just re. <sighs> I don't know. I, I've I did this twenty one days of um, abundance meditation little practice with a group of mindfulness on yeah. yeah on WhatsApp and honestly, do you recommend doing it? Because I I've, I've been doing it but I haven't done it yet. You know what? I found the first few days so hard because especially in our kind of job, right? You're always like go 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 go, and your mind's always got to be on. And the meditations aren't even that long; they're about maybe ten minutes max. But just like stopping and kind of thinking about nothing, or meditating after reading, you know, you follow this guide. And I was like, I feel a bit of like an idiot, but I'm just going to stick with it. Some days I was awful, like meditating. I was literally like, I'm literally thinking about what I'm going to eat for breakfast. And then you got to kind of get your mind back. But I've actually you you it's look doing it has made me realize a lot about myself as in like what do i actually want in this world now yeah like, what, uh, uh, if i take away my job if i take away even having patrick or where i live or where i'm from what color skin i am what all of this who am i as as nick it i've never this thing has literally made me look in the face and 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 kind of face some things about about yeah. myself. Um, oh, I won't go too deep into it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. <laughs> it's it's some of it's been really good, and I've been like, actually, I've done all right. And then yeah. other things, I'm like, you need to sort this out ASAP right. sooner. You know, right? But yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> Let, let's press the let's let's press plus let's press the rewind button a bit um, to to both of you guys. Uh, Nick, you grew up in Australia. Yes, born, born and raised. Born and raised. And how how long ago was it before you moved to the UK? Uh, so I moved to the UK in two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Years ago now. End of, yeah. yeah. End of two thousand and twelve. Yeah, and it, were you always into the arts, and were you always like, was this a path that you knew that you were gonna head toward? Oh gosh, absolutely not. I I grew up in like a oh my gosh, that was my <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let this photo live here for a bit because it's just too damn cute. <laughs> Well, obviously, I play piano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I grew up in a super musical family and always played in churches. Oh, yeah. gosh, that was that was after I went on a TV show. That was, I mean, we could talk about that later. Yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about that for sure. Um, and then I grew up doing music, and I was like, I'm going to be a music teacher because I'm, I'm, I love it. I absolutely loved it. And then I went to a college showcase in yeah. Australia uh, and then I saw what happened on stage and I was like what is this and then I basically I was doing my music degree and then the next year after I was like I'm going to college and 
my family were a bit like, uh, what's, what, like, what? And I was like, this is something I really want to pursue. So then wow. I went to, yeah, musical theatre college. Uh, well, dance college, really. That There wasn't a lot of musical theatre back where I was back then. Right. Uh, and but then, was, yeah. was, was the dance something you knew that you were good at? Uh Sort of. I kind of did like these little dance um, things in church where my sister would choreograph and, you know, you'd have to do the thing on the Sunday with the, the kids' school or, you know what I mean? And then I joined a hip-hop crew when I was 16. Yeah. And then that's where I started. And then I went to college and then I took, yeah. Then I started full-time, like, proper dance training when I was 21. So I started really late. And I didn't know like what a plie was and like a pirouette. I was like, all this language is all brand new. There were loads of kids that have danced since they were four. And I was like, I had a lot of catch up to do. And then, yeah, the weird thing is music actually brought me back here. My first job, I toured Australia with um, Barry Humphreys and then the show came here. And then ever since then, I've kind of been here. Yeah. And then I fell in love here in the UK. I go music, theater, music, music, theater. Yeah, that's, that's how I Felipe, came here. Felipe Bejarano. So it's nice because Nick Len and Felipe are kind of like my Asian side and my Spanish side combined. Because <laughs> oh, Pedro Valdez, that's a that's a Latino name. Very, very Because <laughs> I'm from the Philippines, so we're like the Mexico of Asia. <laughs> <laughs> we're like because because we were colonized by Spain for a couple of hundred years. So anyway, so tell me more about um your background. How did you start? Were you always this amazing? I I, would, I would, don't think I was ever into theater as such. My dad is just very musical. He's always sung um at church whenever we went to church. Um, we'd always sing. Um, so I guess music has always been in our family. Right. Um, I played violin, not so much now, um, but I played violin for the under 18s Welsh Orchestra. <gasps> Thank you. <What? laughs> I mean, I don't play anymore. My violin's totally in the shed back. Oh my God. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> oh, no. Really? The violin. <laughs> I feel so untalented next to you guys. <laughs> okay, oh, anyway. Oh, please, if I got my violin out right now, it would be the same. <laughs> um, so music is just something that's always been um, around me. Um, and it was in, I think, at GCSE Music, where the teacher said, um, Mr. Edwards, was like, look, we don't have any boys, and we can kind of pass you if you do a musical. Um, I remember auditioning for Hairspray, didn't get it. <gasps> <laughs> didn't get it at rough times. Um, and what else? I think Sound of Music as well, didn't get it. Uh, I was like, it's all fine. Something like you yeah, yeah, um 10. They got, then they did like a We Will Rock You one and then ended up getting that. And then that's how we kind of passed music GCSE because that really struggled for boys then. Um, but a secret passion of mine since I was little has always been aviation. I'm obsessed with planes, airliners. Um, it's just always been a thing that I've always wanted to be an airline pilot. Um, and went and uh, applied for uni. Ended up getting in, um, but upon doing that, I did a search for a Twitter star competition. Um, um, Western producer um, won that, and then kind of um, was told, maybe, you know, go on audition for theatre school, see how it goes. Um, and I did. I went to Lane um, with two left feet. Miss Lane made me audition twice. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've still got two left feet. No. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Um, this guy has not got two left feet. It's impossible. Oh, believe you me, I do. <laughs> Poster boy for the recent run of Evita at the Barbican. Uh, no, that wasn't supposed to be at the Barbican, but at the o open uh, open air park, yeah, Regent, park. Regent's Park. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ended up going to Lane, and I loved it. Um, everyone they could dance. And I went at 19. So kind of like Nick went later than everyone at Lane tends to go, roughly at 16. No, wait, 19 is late, is it? Well, I guess I guess considered dance college, most people tend to go at 16, or, or at least at Lane. Um, yeah. Yeah. And normal school, most people, I guess, would go at 18. Yeah. Um, part seven, yeah. Like, from 18 onwards. Um, and so I felt really, really old compared. Mm. Um, 
especially starting dance at that age, most people tend to start, I mean, they go to like dance school when they're 14 or whatever. So I, like Nick, had no clue. Um, but I guess it just, if you are determined, and nine times out of 10, I was the worst in the class and in my year. You yeah. just got to pull down and, and keep working and, and eventually, yeah. you know, you'll pick up the steps and you learn what a plie is. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's yeah. Kind of my background on it. Fast forward, um, you guys, uh, you were a, you're you're a swing and at the Prince of Egypt at the Dominion, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> why is that? Why is there a laugh to that? <laughs> that show is a big show, <laughs> a massive show. I actually saw it right mm -hmm. before I went to Liverpool on the on the week that you guys previewed and opened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's like if you're on the ensemble or a swing on this, you. You're mm. definitely going to be put to work. Oh, absolutely! I was there sat in, in in the creating the show. We were kind of all between us things. We were like, "How long do we think it's going to be before <laughs> you see the show?" <laughs> Insane. Nowhere near like the next track is things flying. I mean, to be fair, like most shows, you you have a lot of things going on at the same time. Yeah, but it's not the stage itself is in a normal shape. There's right. blocks which are four different sizes. Um, and they all have to create certain things. And this one time I went on for um, uh, one of the uh, main ensemble tracks and I hadn't got my one marking. I got one marking really wrong. And poor Alice, she does this, she runs and does this jump thing and she landed on the floor and she smacked her head on the thing because there's so many things everywhere. Sorry, Alice. Oh um, my God. <laughs> but yes, there's just so many things going on. Um, you have to know your stuff that, that yeah but really? also if, if people get to see it that show is really it's just moving bodies constantly they're, they're creating the shapes of the set yeah. the environments all the the ensemble is completely used up well, Nick, yeah. Yeah. you were you're you're you were our assistant dance captain um yeah. but is was king and i your first swing or dance captain job it was i mean i've i I rehearsed the show, bless its soul, when um that arena show Heaven on Earth was around a few years back. So I was swing on that. <clears throat> I was also actually my very, very, very first job was in my first year of college. At the end of uh, my first year, uh, this Looney Tunes show came out and I was like, I really want to do it. And everyone was like, they're all going to get it. And I was like, this is no way in hell am I going to get a job in the first year of college. And then I got it and I was like, yes, I'm very, very happy about this. But, um, <laughs> I understudied Porky Pig and Bugs Bunny and I thought my poo did not smell. Like it was. Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> so that was my first <laughs> swing job. No. Uh, my first proper, proper one would, would have been Heaven on Earth. And that was, I feel like it was quite similar to Prince of Egypt in that th this arena show was a massive stage. Like there were toaster lifts coming out right. the floor. There was like people flying uh, and, and you had to make a lot of the set. And in rehearsal, again, I was just like, how am I? I was like, this is going to be impossible. It's going to take me a year and a half to learn this. And by the time I learn it all, it's going to be over. Uh, King and I, I was in the ensemble first when okay. we were at the London Palladium. So I guess I kind of got eased into it that way. Uh, yeah. So uh, changing into a swing wasn't too much of a, of a difficulty because yeah. um, I basically knew that the base of the show, and I think that's the most important thing. The, the more you know the show as a whole, the more you can kind of pick it apart as opposed to like chasing the tail of like each track, which like it's so much harder with a brand new show because things also yeah. change in rehearsal. You're like, I've just written all this out and you've just changed it. And it's like- it's writing down and then that page goes yeah. out. Because yeah. <laughs> you're developing a new, a brand new show. But similarly to Prince of Egypt, King and I is also very dance based. The ensemble, the ensemble is really like the centerpiece of Act Two is this humongous ballet. So to be a swing on that, um, I remember one of our swings, Sam, uh, and Sam, Sam and Jasmine, who are all under you and uh, our dance captain Rachel, really needed to to be on their game in terms of knowing all of the tracks for whatever reason would you know 
would come up. But just to give you some context, because back in Manila, our shows never run long enough for us to really need a swing set. Wow. Swing set, you see the pun there. But you know, <laughs> there was no real need for swings or or understudies because our shows maximum would last maybe 20, 25 shows maximum. That's a whole run. So it's around four or five shows for a month. Mm -hmm. And that's already a very, very packed run. That's a lot. Other runs would have less shows. So there was no real need for a swing. Um, so when I came out to the UK, it was a brand new idea. I wasn't a swing in, in Miss Saigon. I was in the ensemble, but I was understudying and covering some, some of the principal roles. But I'm so sorry, my door's just gone. I'm gonna listen. I just gotta be oh, do it. Do your thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do your thing. Um, but I, I, I saw the discipline that swings needed to have. There's this whole practice of a swing bible, which is a you know super thick. I tell you what, I've learned from. I mean, to be fair, I've only had one experience, so I'm not gonna say yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. What I've learned from this is. For me, it's been important being a swing and to really understand, I haven't been ensemble before. Right. I've, never, I've never really quite understood it. I've covered. Yeah. And what principle, I guess it is the same thing to know a different responsibility within um, the cast. Um, it's it's taught me a lot. And I think it's, you either have it or you don't. Um, and it's, it's so much responsibility because um, any any small move can can have an effect on someone else. Yeah. Um, also, standing in one spot one day and the next being the completely opposite side, and it just, it's weird. It's, feeling. it's, it's it, personality, yeah. isn't it? The, you have to have the personality of knowing that you're willing to commit to learning all of these different tracks. Yes, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really really difficult. And I, I I guess I meant to ask, like, how do you how do you become a swing? Do people identify you in the casting process and say, oh, that person has had swing jobs before, he'd make a good swing for a show like this. Or is it is it like an entry level thing? Like if you're fresh out of dance school or college, do you be a swing first before you make your well, make your way up to ensemble and then eventually leads? On what casting panel you're in front of. And sometimes, I mean, respects to all swings, the, some people naturally pick up choreography a lot quicker than others. And I think that might potentially make a casting panel more comfortable in going, okay, I can trust this person um, to quickly pick up detail. Um, so I guess I can I can have more confidence in them um, to pick up everyone else's um, tracks as well. Um, I mean, I guess that's not the same for all of them, but I guess that's, that's the point. That's how I see it. I also think like if you've got swing on your CV, Patrick, for example, yeah, he has swung every like he's basically just swung everything he's been on, and yeah. so it's like you you definitely need to have a certain brain. But I also feel like it's a lot hard harder to come by a good swing because mm. you can't just have the ability of of being able to perform in a show. Right. You're, brain has to think so differently yeah and and i guess it is hard i i i don't know i haven't i mean i've worked i've worked but i haven't done you know 12 yeah. 15 shows to know but yeah you you hear of like people in cast being like how is this person to swing yeah. and not because they're not talented it's just like yeah. it's it it can be really really stressful if you're not if you if you're brain isn't switched on to a certain what a certain way and then you get the joys of split track and then yeah explain to us the whole concept of a split track and also like at, at, especially with king and i if you were we had these like slates that were across the whole stage and they're probably like four inches long if you were like two slates the wrong oh. way or even one slate off the, the lighting was so specific you would just not have any light on you or yeah. you know with with the big lifts in in king and i there's this part where this girl climbs on all the backs and if you're not in the right spot and if you're on that for that track one day then you're the other side of the lift yeah. the other day and then you're a different part it's just yeah it, it's your brain has to just 
think differently. I think, yeah. What's interesting is you can watch the show, but then to actually do it, you have to flip it 180. So I, I'm more of a visual learner where I have to see videos or try and see some some form of um, I can't I can't really do swing mats. I find that for me yeah. doesn't work as as well. And I think I struggle to create a swing bible, but seeing videos, I go, right, okay, this person goes here and here, yeah. Yeah. this or that. And that's how I learn. But then when I'm actually doing it, in the, in the moment, I'm flipping it 180 because I'm used to seeing it in video. And then I go, right, okay, he has to. Yeah. Do a full duel it up. Did a full 180. And exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Also, the split tracks is like, that's, yeah. that's when you're really tested. Mm -hmm. so I think the worst one I did, I did, I had to do two boys and a girl in one show. And that was. I remember that. <laughs> it I remember was that. like. But you you have to find your own way to do it. I'm very much a maps person, but I'm also a uh, I I do like each person on like a quick cheat uh, sheet yeah. of yes. like writing. So not even positions. I I I have to be able to know the positions first. Mm. But it's just like you've got to grab that off, but then you've got to run around and get this other person's one. But, yeah. I mean, I'm that person that has their, like, pages on their, like, dressing table and also take it with me to the quick change because also I don't want to – when you're doing a split, you do not want to be stressed out. Like, you just have to be calm. And I don't, know, I don't know how you do that, Nick. I, I, I I see you in the quick change area, and you are always calm as a piece of wood. Like it's so amazing. I would be going crazy. I'd be going nuts. If I mean, you were like, if I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to be calm and get it wrong, or I'm going to be erratic and get it wrong. I guess that, that um, atmosphere. If if you start to stress out, it kind of passes on to other people, which isn't. Yeah, it's, it's the most professional thing to do. Um, just know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're panicking and you're about to lift someone in the air, mm. and that out, they're going to yeah. be like, "I don't want him fucking lifting me." Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's completely fine. So, so you were, were talking about like swing maps and Bibles. I remember one of our swings for Miss Saigon Divine. She had a very very thorough Bible with all of the colored tabs, all of the highlighters. It was like a whole. Jackson Pollock uh, canvas on her swing, on her swing Bible. How do you guys function? Um, I'm, so Felipe mentioned that he likes watching the videos. Do you have, how do you note these these things down so that you don't forget them? Like Nick, to be fair, for every, for the nine tracks I covered, I um, wrote a cheat sheet. Okay. Uh, and put that on, um, Alice's parents got me an iPad. Thank you, Linda, and thank you, Ian. Um, they got me a little iPad mini in which I put um, on the notes, I put a track, um, for every single um, male ensemble, right, and that is then what I then took took down. I think I would go into work m having the track memorized, and I'd find that I'd wake up honestly at four in the morning, being like, "What is what? <laughs> what kind of track do? You, what, what does it do? You? It picks up a small brick and then passes it to someone, and my mind would constantly be thinking about it. So, but I yeah. felt more comfortable." Being on stage, knowing my stuff, there's nothing worse. I guess even like when you when you mind blank on stage, even if you're not a, a swing or anything, there's right. nothing worse than, than just your mind going blank, right? Or having to or not being in the moment because you have to think about the next step, right? So the more prepared you are, the better the better I found it for me. Um, right. So yeah, of course I would have the cheat sheet there um, in the iPad, right. but I would try and memorize the track. Um, so that I didn't come off stage going, okay, was what's next? Unless I, I you know, I really forgot. Mm. I think <laughs> also if, if you have, the more you can put in your brain and not have to write it down, the actual better yeah. it will go in. Yeah. So if yeah. you're rehearsing and you're writing down all the numbers, you're like, yes, I've just written it. I've just written it down. And you're like, and then when you go to do it, you're like, all I've done is written it down. Yeah. So by the end, I mean, by the end, I went on quite a bit, but, eventually you cannot look at it because yeah. you, you that's how well you know it and that's how I feel like you should be able to, to get it. I mean, there's certain things where it was like, <laughs> put still down on 
slate four of laying something and sometimes that gets a bit oh i can't remember so that's the things you check not what count is this move on it's more well, about yeah, it's really really nice cast members that kindly just nudge you with with a smile you know? <laughs> so they can't tell <laughs> how do you how do you get better at it now that you've done your swing jobs and now you now that you know your own system is there a way like can you because i like to automate things so that you can get better is there a way to automate the process um because ju just for context like okay. i didn't realize how important a swing was until i've experienced doing shows out here when you're doing eight to nine shows a week and for a year you're doing this contract and it's it's all it's all nice at the start if you're a swing because you hardly go on right at the very start of the contract. <laughs> place back on okay, how soon am I going to go on right? And then when you get slapped on, it's at a time that you don't expect it. But so all given all of that, is there a way to kind of prepare yourself for it, especially if you're going into a contract wherein you are a swing? How do you kind of all right? I need to brace myself. Honestly, just know your stuff. There's, there's no, yeah. I mean, there is no other way of going right. Just know your stuff because yeah. it, it's going to have an impact and you don't want to annoy any, anyone else. And like Nick said, if you are doing partner work and someone doesn't know their work and you run the lifts at warm up and it still doesn't go right, it doesn't feel down to the captain with confidence um, and your fellow cast members. I, yeah. I think that would be quite unprofessional. Yeah. Um, there, is, there is a bit of leeway where people know that you have a lot going on in your mind. So right. I guess your cast members are also aware of that. And it is, um, for me, it is exciting when someone else, if I've been in an ensemble and not a swing, and I've had a swing come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I find that exciting because they, or an understudy, they, they, they have a different take on it. Yeah. Um, to be completely fair though, because even during the rehearsal process, the swings don't get to go on. You're there with your notebooks, just watching all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard to, especially for those that need to move it. So mm -hmm. is it eggy when you go, oh, can I do an extra rehearsal? Or <laughs> do you, you're, you, you, you guys have to be working twice as hard as the things you, you can practice. You can practice yourselves, you know? I um, mean, yeah. you, you do have time, um, I guess, off stage. Even when a show is running, um, right. a Prince of Egypt, there's, there's a room at the top of the Dominion where some of us would run the show and we'd turn the tano on. Um, obviously, pretend to some break. Didn't have the props, but if you run it in real time, I guess yeah. that that worked um, for some people. Um, watch, just watch videos. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I um, I've got a frog in my throat. I um, I used to like watching from the the wings as well because i found and this again this everyone is different like some people can look at a sheet and be okay with that and if that's the way you want to do it then you go for it yeah uh you'll work out very quickly what way doesn't work for you right. Right. do you know what i mean but i like i you should watch from the wings mostly because you you can see it on a sheet or for me when I watch it up front you get a um a depth perception right. and then you get on and you think you need to take six steps on and you actually need to take three right. and then you're like oh okay and then you jump out and you're like I'm in the wrong spot yeah uh, also uh always I I think it's fine to ask like the ensemble. To, to do it with them because I feel yeah. like they, they will feel a lot safer around you as well. And if yeah. it walks up, obviously don't be like, can we run the whole show in between shows? Like, <laughs> not that. But there's certain bits that in warm up, it's fine to do. And I also, uh, I always have map out the stage as well. Like during, if we're doing vocal warm up, I'll walk around the stage, yeah. just going here, 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 here. Not yeah. disturbing anyone. If you get stuck, you'd be like, actually, what do I do? Like, what's easiest for you if I go in front, behind, you know, fill in the holes? That's, that's yeah. But watching, watching, watching. And, yeah, know your stuff. That That is the biggest thing. Mm. It's easier said, like, when you hear it, to know your stuff. It's really easier said than done, especially if you're studying like nine, ten tracks at a time. Um, you, kind of, you, do learn, you do learn more doing it, though, I guess. Right. 
even even if you are doing your own um, set ensemble track, if yeah. you're not, doing, you get things wrong. You know. Yeah. I think also it's it's important to be be okay with making a mistake, but learning from that and not doing it again. Like don't 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 cry too much over a mistake that you made. It just keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, if you've made a mistake because you're unprepared, then that's when you'll be more nervous as well. But if you've made a genuine mistake, I mean, we're literally not saving lives. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, we are, but we're not. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. No, I get it. It's it's like, let's be, let's just, you know, you can't be too hard on yourself if you make a genuine mistake. Exactly. I think you just can't. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go into the truth bomb segment of it. What are the most... Um, common misconceptions that you've heard about swings that they're not they're like the b reserve that <laughs> mm -hmm. they're not the oh you're not good enough to be on stage every night i, I mean i i don't know how to elaborate on that <laughs> yeah yeah that's complete myth complete misconception because like as i was watching and doing my little um trolling research on felipe and nick it blew my mind at how amazing they were at singing. Like I had no idea because I I've known and seen you both as dancers mainly, but it just blew my mind that you guys can easily take any principal role that you guys want if you wanted it. Like, I want it. Am I making you blush? Nick? <laughs> no. I, my worst nightmare is to to play a part. Why? Like, I wouldn't feel like in the background. Mm. I, I'm just that's just me. Uh, mm. There's there is a big misconception that everybody that goes to college or trains wants to be a lead character, mm -hmm. and, and it's okay if you're not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's completely I, I mean, okay, and, and people actually prefer that. A lot of people I know and I've met out here actually prefer that. So you're going to say Felipe? No, sorry, I was just agreeing, just agreeing with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I think that's a complete misconception that the swings are like the B reserve and yeah. not good enough to be in the ensemble because they're absolutely for them to cast the swings first, right? Um, before the ensemble. Um, I'm not sure how. I don't think that is true here in the UK. I don't really know. Um, Did you say I, in the US they cast the swings first? Supposedly, yeah. Oh, um, they told me. Yeah, it's harder to cast the swing, but that's. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It's it's so hard to cast the swing because you're not only casting their ability to do the tracks, you're also casting their mental ability to learn more than one track. Um, what do you find to be the biggest challenge as a swing? Apart from the obvious, like... The biggest challenge that I found was for me to be able to switch off and actually have just switch off from work i think normally having not done swing before i'd be able to leave work at work but i found that i would be constantly thinking about it because i didn't want to make a mistake right um but i guess i that that isn't necessarily a bad thing it just means that i, I want to get my work right you know yeah yeah so i think that me the actual job itself yeah of course you know you are going to get some things wrong but maybe switching off um at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you go to bed and you're like, uh, this, yeah. this, that's there, that's there. And you just, for a, you, I would, you I would have to look at my phone or my notes or whatever just to see or solidify because otherwise, if, if I have to let that go and then the moment comes and I'm like, I had that chance. I had that chance. Just go back. I'll, I'll tell you what, what I realize is that you guys, the swings, um, the covers, the dance captains in particular, you're essentially working at least an hour or two ahead of everybody else because you wake up and you're you get in, involved in the cut sheet if there's a cut sheet you guys know what's going to be going on uh as early as the creatives know or the resident directors and the, the company managers know before everybody else knows right so you guys are working essentially double our hours the regular hours yeah you you, you yeah you, you you you're thinking about the show earlier than anyone else. If you get like the text at eleven for the mat matinee, like you can't be like, okay, I'll think about that when I get to work. It's like, <laughs> no, you, you've got your phone out, you're double checking things. You're, you, yeah, 
you're right. You're, al you're already problem uh, troubleshooting mm -hmm. as early as the whole company, uh, as the company managers and the creatives are, before mm -hmm. before the news gets out to us. The the regular. actually, I, I actually find it slightly thrilling in some ways. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Not <laughs> I would enjoy. But if you're on for a new track, you kind of go, okay, this is this is going to be fun. Sometimes the costume. Yeah. And in Prince of Egypt, you get wigs. Sometimes you get wigs, and we we never got to try them at all until, until the day you saw everyone else in the ensemble and and the the lead and support and all try their wigs, and you kind of sit aside and you you do want to try a costume on that, um, especially the wigs, but yeah. Yeah, you never get to try it until you go on, um, and it's always just a quick, oh, that's what it looks like. All right, you're on. Uh -huh. are, there, are there any like? completely memorable cut show stories that you had or when you had to go on that was like you know like you completely messed up or or you needed to be oh, in Prince of e I don't want to ruin it but towards the end soldiers die and they get drowned by the Red Sea yeah of course and I thought I was on I think I, I think I was on for Oliver um and a, I think, um, and in my head, uh, I was doing someone else's track. Oh no, the day before I'd gone, um, after they, they drowned, I'd gone um, towards stage right, and I needed to be stage left. Right. And so I went down through the band pit and went the wrong way. And I thought I was in, I was, I was in line, ready to finish a show. I was there like, yes. And it's very quick that you have to change into, back into <laughs> Hebrew. And they're going up the stairs and I've slowly realized I am on the wrong side. Oh um, my God. You just run through, get checked. I make it. I don't know how I make it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I managed to make it, but I think I think that that was yeah the worst. Yeah, well, so I, far. I can't remember. I mean, I remember getting my positions very, very wrong one what? day. Well, I I was on for a dog once. <laughs> to get <laughs> track normally, yeah. and I. Okay. We've got about, we go from like these these like hats with these sticks on them and these gold shoulders and I think the the change is about fifteen seconds. Really, really great. Do yeah. Best on and get a, a, a you get this dog thing. You got to take these things off and then you, it's all very very choreographed. And the thing is, you never get to try that really. Oh, you don't. <laughs> I mean, that's when that's when it gets a bit stressful. But that's when you just have to surrender the, to the fact and trust that the dressers know what they're doing. Yeah. They're so it's important; me. like they oh. are just as important as yeah. any other department. It Definitely, infuriates me when it's like, "Oh, you're just a dresser," or uh, I mean, I could talk about this for another uh, yeah. for a very long time. But oh. they are just <laughs> as important for you as you are for them. Like yeah, anyway, so Definitely. I didn't change went great and then you run out you, i think you've got like uh, a five and six and seven and then you've got to stop on the eight and it's like there's three people on stage there's no like hiding behind any set it's like a perfect diagonal and i went out and i went down <laughs> my spot was like there and i was like i'm not even in the right spot here and then you've got to really sniff the ground as you're moving around and i was like it's trying to sniff backwards <laughs> <So I'm> going, <laughs> And it was just, oh, oh God. God. There was another time where the other swing, Sam, he came on with a hat on. So he just came on with a wig cap and he's like, got this river in his hand. <laughs> he's like, you're in the completely wrong, out where the, where the hell is your hat? Yeah. And yeah. You, you sometimes when you get on stage, and you know you're in the wrong spot or you've got the wrong thing on or something like that. Actually, yeah. sorry, I've got a really good story. Do it, do it. <laughs> so I was on for a monk one time and uh -huh. our show is barefoot. I mean, bless all our shins. Actually, Philippe, but you're barefoot in most of yours, right? Yeah, actually, yeah, we are. Bless our shins. So we're <laughs> all in barefoot dancing and then we come across with these monks in this really like gorgeous like little time it's like a sunrise yeah. and the monks go across and you wear your slippers in the wings <laughs> and these are the primark slippers these are the <laughs> i have my primark slippers on so we're coming across doing this chat and i was on stage and it's like the slowest walk you can ever do 
and all the boys had taken their slippers off and I went on and I did the whole cross with my slippers on. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, I've got my slippers on. And then everyone behind me was laughing so hard. But I was like, <laughs> I worn my slippers on stage. I love that. I love that. You've got to go with it. You, once you're on stage, it's nothing you yeah, can do. The thing. You can't, and it's not like you can run off. It was just, oh God. That, I'm that, sure Bartlett Cher would, would, would have found a reason for why this, the monk wore slippers. Um, <laughs> they were like Primark fluffy blue ones. I mean, there was no disguising them. Anymore. Okay, is, th is this a myth or is this, a, is this the truth? Are swings probably some of the fittest and um, uh, healthiest and physically prime members of the cast? I think it depends on the show. I've got to be brutally honest. Actually, yeah. the show requires something different. Um, but swings have to do exactly what the ensemble have to do. So I guess in some respects, is everyone is, is everyone. Do you see yeah. what I mean? I, but, don't, but don't you need, don't you need your body to be adapting or be ready for more, for more tracks or different stimulus? Um, the only difference is a, is a mental. Okay. Kind of, yeah. I mean, uh, if you were on an ensemble show, I, I would, I would go to the gym to try and do some, do a different form of exercise because I guess you, your body kind of gets show fit. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's it, in 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 different, in, it's a different, different, same thing. I how mean, many, how many swings did you guys have for, for the Regent's Park Evita? Because that, I mean, everybody was really, really strong and fit in that show. How many swings? Yeah. Did you get swings for that well, show? First of all, we had an amazing dance captain. If yeah. you worked with Amy Thornton, you will know. She is a fantastic dance captain extraordinaire. So shout out to her. Right. Um, we also had uh, two amazing swings, Hannah um, and Ollie, um, who, bless them, would, I mean, it's a show on stairs. So, yeah. I mean, just for people to know, like this show, is on stair the set is just stairs. Mm. So oh my god. Oh my god. I can just imagine it was I I could not have sung that show. Respect. Respect yeah. to those, um three people. Oh Pete and Nash as well, who is also our assistant that's captain. Hi Pete. Um but bless Hannah um would come in and same as Ollie and every single day there was one time where a lot of people went off ill. And actually to be fair the ensemble got a bit of a swing taster because everyone had to shift. Rich. And that was actually really exciting. Yeah. It, it brought the cast, even though it was an amazing cast, it brought the cast kind of, it gave them like a, a different life for that show. Right. Which was nice at a time when everyone else is ill and you're like, oh God, who's dropping off today? Um, yeah. Bingo, who's going to go off today? Um, but That's yeah, no, it was, it was honestly, um, a fun experience having not been a swing and as an ensemble you know you get something different but the two swings yeah I can... swings but they were left right and center every single show would be like oh hi hannah hi ollie oh something different <laughs> wow wow it is a very physical show that so mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. all right so where do you guys get your um this is prob probably just not just as you as swings but just you guys as actors and as um professionals where do you guys get your motivation? Because a long run can can take its toll on you. You know what I mean? You're doing eight, nine shows a week. You know, where do you guys find reason to deliver the same standard every single day? Apart from the fact that you guys are obviously really professional, but then I'm sure you got to dig somewhere. Um, it's like, uh, well, for me, it's a bit of self pride, really. Like, yeah, you want to be proud of your work. So I guess it's the same way you motivate yourself with, with anything, with any kind of discipline or job or any job that you're passionate about. I think we're very lucky that we love what we love our work. Yeah. So it, even though it is work, we're doing what we love. So it's, it's uh, of course, you have your days, but I think it's just respecting yourself enough to be like, I don't want to do a bad job today. Yeah, I want to. I want to be good for me. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like it takes more work to be lazy on stage than it does to, um, 
you know, give 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 it what it needs. Yeah, know? definitely. I had an experience where um, I had to do par de deux with a swing, um, and I ended up coming coming off injured. It wasn't the swings. It wasn't the swings entire fault you know part of it is a two-way thing um and i kind of thought i never as a swing i would never want to injure someone on stage i would mm. never want to um granted they don't we just don't get the same same amount of time as yeah. if you're to go on stage yeah. and do it together you kind of find your own um path with it um but that's that's my my thing i don't want to affect someone else's um show do yeah. you don't take to it some people can brush it off some people can really take it take it to heart so i think that for me is is something that motivates me to not not want to get something wrong for um for your cast me yeah for your cast me. and as well people are paying a lot of money you know theater right. is, isn't the cheapest um so people are paying a lot of money and you don't want to mess up you know yeah was yeah. there was there any time in your careers and it's a you guys have done a lot of shows and a lot of tours, a lot of experience in it. Was there any time that you felt, oh, this is so, it's burning me out. I want to throw in the towel. Yeah. Really? I have to be honest. Yeah. Um, there are some, it's to me, it's my nine to five. And I think it's okay to some days. Yeah, definitely. Not hundred percent love my work, you know? Um, having said that, the highs, um, by far outweigh the um the lows of course i love it but it, you know some days my body won't be feeling great i won't you know i'm i'm tired um i love it there's it's great and i think this industry can be so varied with respects to what you can do to you you can always keep your mind fresh and i think that's what's always exciting there's always a different show coming in um a cast change a swing going on there's so many things to keep um yeah. fresh yeah for me Yes, yeah, it's, it's basically what I answered before as well. It's just if, if you're gonna show up, show up. Right. Yeah, bless you. <laughs> like you, you know, and it's okay to have off days and not beat yourself up. But yeah. when you come to work, it's literally three and a half hours of your your entire day. Right. I'm not saying don't. You know, people are gonna pick up that you're in a a different mood or something's up and and uh, as long as you're not kind of feeling that through everyone i think that's the, mm -hmm. the hard thing is to just if you're going to show up show up and do your do your job to be fair i think that's where that's why i really respected you and rachel our dance captain because there was a lot of empathy like they were so co cognitive of energies and mental states mm -hmm. and knew it they knew how to manage people so well and that it didn't affect the energy or the quality or the or it didn't it didn't negatively affect the show or the performance of of the whole ensemble and i think that I mean, it takes a leader it takes such leadership to do that to feel for your co-actors and to feel for your co-cast members and just try to maintain you know a good vibe so that the show delivers the way it needs to be delivered so yeah, You've got to be really like personal with people because at the end of the day, uh, this sounds so stupid, but you're you're working with humans, yeah. like you're working with other people who've not stupid at all, Nick. We're not like uh, on a sheet of paper they might be boy one, boy two. Mm. But you can't treat people at work like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and you don't get the best work out of people by being like, "Why did you get that wrong?" Or like, mm. you, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, right. that's. But thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> I'm gonna make Nick cry. That's my goal today. Um, <laughs> did you guys ever get memorable rejection stories in this industry? I mean, yes, <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> okay, well, we have enough time for like to to to, to hear the best one. Nick, you want to go first? Oh my god. Okay, I auditioned for this one shirt. I'm not gonna say what it is. And I thought, I was like, this is me. I'm really excited about this. This is fantastic. Uh, and then I did all these rounds. And then at the end, I was like, I, I think I'm going to get this. Like, this is great. 
And in the very first round of auditions, you had to do like an acro, like show any acro you did. So I did my my usual acro pass. I was like, great, first round, bish, bash, bosh. Then I sung and then I danced again. And then like another day I came back and another day I came back and then danced and sung. And I was like, really happy with this. And then I got a no and I was like, okay, let's talk about this. And <laughs> it's like, in the email it said that my acro wasn't strong enough and it really hit me because i was a bit like and why didn't you cut me on the first day why did you like it, it that was a big one for me and then it kind of delved in because i was a bit like well this doesn't make sense this doesn't like this could have been you know you, you, yeah and then it turns out that it was something else. And then you realize actually, when you get told, it, it, it came across, it was the way that I presented myself in a room. And I don't mind rejection, but I, it, it's like I wasn't, it, the way I walked into the room was very, it was very chill. It was very laid back. It was very like, I, I'm, Australians are so chill. So we'll walk into the room and be like, hey, how you doing? I'm not gonna like lick assholes in an audition room just to get a job. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think some people don't like that. And so then it, that, that was actually the reason. And I was like, oh my yeah. God, I didn't get this job I really wanted because I basically didn't lick their assholes. Mm. So that's, that's one of many, but that, that was a real big one where I had to look at myself and be like, actually Nick, no, you don't change because of that. Just do you. Yeah, and also your acro is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your acro, it's not your acro. Your acro is good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there, there's loads of stories. There's even times where I've got a show back in Australia and then I auditioned for it here and I got cut the first round. So, I mean, it, 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 yeah. it's, wow. you never know what it's going to come. And as long as you're okay with rejection, and I, I have another. I have another question to ask both of you after I hear Felipe's rejection story. I mean, yeah, that, that's it. Go on, Felipe. <laughs> okay. So second year at Lane, um, and it's towards the end. Yeah, no, it, it was towards the end of second year at Lane, and Aladdin had come through. So Lane Agency sends me the audition through, and I go, "Great, okay." Uh, end up going um, and get cut straight away. And in me, I was like. Ah, oh, bummer. You know, maybe a fresh graduate, uh, not graduate, fresh college mindset that you have where you're so determined. Right. Um, as you go through experiences, you know, you, you go to form different opinions. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I'm not taking it out. I can't, I, how? You know, it's one of those things that in me at the time, I was like, I've come so prepared. I've learned my material. And it was the first no, because I hadn't auditioned before professionally. It was the first no that I've ever had. So I went to the open call and ended up getting through to the end of the day. And the casting director at the time um, and the MD were like, why, why haven't you had a private? And I was like, do I lie? Do I say I have had a private, I've been cut or I, I, oh my God. And I thought, you know, what? best thing to do is just be honest. So I was honest. Um, I was like, look, got cut straight away um, in London. They thought, all right, cool. Well, here's another chance. Didn't book the show, and it's been the one that's got away. But um, I guess whilst is, it was that was embarrassing at the time, I guess in some ways it proved to persevere. And sometimes, yeah, you know, keep going for it. Because there's been many, <laughs> I can't remember, believe you me, there's been so many no's. You really don't know, you can, really can't put down the exact reason for why you're cut. You're never going to know. You're absolutely never gonna know. Yeah. But how do you guys unpack that when you get a rejection? I mean, you have you have partners, so you have Patrick, you have Alice. But d how long does it take for you to unpack that or or shake it off and say, okay, that's done, move on? Um, especially for shows like that, which you've really, really wanted to get into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's always someone better at it than me. So if my I have to be at ease with my talent and my ability and understand that it is a puzzle. 
um, sometimes I might fit the piece. And sometimes, sometimes you hear of people that haven't got the job and you go, how? And there's sometimes, sometimes there are people on stage and you go, how did you book the job? Right. But that is just out of your, your control completely. Um, and you just sometimes have to hope for the best. You can, as long as you know your material and you pick up the routine the best that you can, all you can do in the room is give it your best. Control your nerves and don't overspeak. Um, I mean, yeah. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Indeed. And just hope you fit in the puzzle. You just have to surrender to the fact that your uh, uh, that your your worth is a lot more than what job you have. Of course, yes, that's quotable. Quote. That's, that's how mm -hmm. I personally do it. Because if I put all my, uh, uh, of course, I love, 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 love my job, but if I base my kind of my happiness level on the work that I'm doing, I will never be happy. And so when, when you're told a no, you kind of got to, of course it's crazy, you're going to be sad and you're going to be upset, especially if it's something that you really want to do. I, um, uh, you kind of have to take yourself out of your job, which is so hard because our job is so intertwined with our social life, with our, and we love yeah. it. We are hunted. We love it absolutely so hard. Uh, and just, I don't know, I, I've newly found this meditation thing and I feel like it's really. It's, I'm going to have to try it, Nick. I'm, it's, yeah. it's on my I'm going to have I'm to try sure. it. Uh, 21 days of abundance. How are we feeling? Come at me. <laughs> bring it in. Bring it in. And you're, I think you're right, Felipe. There's always going to be someone better than you. And if you don't think someone's better than you, then. I don't really want to be your friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and that's all right. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I remember. I mean, right. you both know the, the last big show I auditioned for. Mm. And um, I remember getting into the first day of that audition and seeing just what felt like 200, 300 people that were all better looking, better dancing, just better than me. Mm. And, I left that first audition thinking to myself, and I mentioned this to my wife, what am I doing here in the UK? Let me just go back to the Philippines. I, I am way out of my league here. Complete imposter mentality. And long story short, I booked the job. Mm. I booked mm. the job just yeah. got because of COVID. But it, I mean, I learned a lot about that process that like what you said, your worth is so much more than the immediate rejection that you have to face or the you pressure on yourself yeah. I, I, that I do to when you get material you know material through i guess preparation is key but you put so much pressure on yourself beyond just that the the, the way that you look e everything, everything everything all these social pressures and and everyone looks good yeah everyone so many boys out there have a much better body than i i do and it's those those pressures that kind of weigh on you to kind of look right for a panel and you kind yeah. of get so caught up in that that you need to just halt for a little bit yeah. um, when you realize that they're that's not actually what they care about mm. you're obsessing over the, the thing that you think they want to see or or want yes and like, that's actually not what we're looking for right. we're going to go with, with this now because there's this weird energy coming from you know you know yeah. And I think it's it's just embracing that it's, again. It's Twenty one days of abundance, but and just embracing that the fact that you're exactly where you need to be at this exact moment. Just embrace that and just know that that's where you need to be at this given moment. And I think it kind of will ease you from all of this, you know, pressure and you know all of these whispers of insecurity. Do you guys still get insecure at at at, at us now? Every single day. <laughs> oh. Walk into an audition and there's someone out there that can dance much better than you can. And you're stood outside umbrella rooms and you're just about to go in and you hear that guy absolutely smash the material. And you know you've got to go in there straight after that. Yeah. yeah. Someone says, um, Chef Sound, El Rosario, uh, sometimes do you get rejected because they think you're way too good for the role? Is that possible? <laughs> I mean, that would be really nice. Not, I don't think it happened to me before. 
Or at least they will, they'll never admit it, right? They'll never tell you, oh, we can't have you because you're too good. No. <laughs> I'd love it to be the case. I really, really would. Yeah. But yeah. Next. You might not be. Uh, I feel like uh, if they're looking for one track on one day and you're mm. really good at something else that they can see, but they need this puzzle piece, then, yeah, yeah I guess that would happen. Because it really yeah. is a puzzle. There's so many factors and fiddly things that, um, that go around casting one particular. Being an, understudy, being an understudy, Chris Fine. <laughs> Hi, Chris Fine. Chris <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you can't take it to heart. You can't take it to heart. You don't know what, what they're looking for. Um, and like Nick said, if you're going for one specific, well, that can sometimes be really hard. If you're going for one specific track and there's, there's 50, 60 boys in the room and you go, I mean, come on. Yeah. And yeah. They, it's down to it. They, they're down to 10. And then even 10, 10 to one, that's still. Yeah. No, it's, still, it's still the odds are still too much. So how do you guys keep going? Get rejected. How do you guys keep going? What keeps you? I know it, 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 this is on the heels of what we talked about earlier, but what, what do you guys love so much about this business that makes you just keep falling back into it? I like the fact that for me, my, my goals have evolved. Um, I thought theatre for me would be everything I've wanted to do. And at the beginning, um, when I signed my agent, um, he kind of, he, he, he appreciate that, um, but he also saw something else. Um, and he kind of also said what, what he thought and his plans and I put my trust in him. Mm. And within that, I've enjoyed um, screen activity, uh, um, opportunities. Um, as well as stage. And that's kind of opened up my, what I thought was something just at lame, we don't train in, or we didn't train in um, screen work yeah. or, or TV or film or any of that. Um, and I've really enjoyed the opportunities um, that I've had so far. And it's something that I would love to explore more if the uh, chance comes. I mean, it is hard, but got to try I'm <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Mm. Well, for me, I think life is too short to not do what you love or what you know gives you a kick and if I wake up tomorrow and I'm like I actually hate theatre and it doesn't come from a I've been rejected so many times that I just don't want it as in like a I'm genuinely not passionate about my job anymore I'm gonna want to find something else and Which it's just important to be honest to yourself whether you really enjoy your job yeah you are you are working for someone else and that's it that's, that's all it's going to feel like. Yeah. yeah. And there's this pressure when you go to, I mean, especially, I mean, I trained in Australia, so it, it's it's a little bit of a different dynamic because it's more uh, dance-based and theatre is kind of like, mm. uh, not on the backbone, but it's it's not like in the UK where you go to a theatre school right. to go, like, to join musical theatre. Right. Mm. But I feel like there's this pressure that what if you go to college, then you have to do musical theatre and if you don't do theatre you're a failure mm. and it's not that's not it it's okay. at all and it's just rewiring the brain and I think it's up to colleges as well to kind of instill that as well my my teacher Todd Patrick who runs the where I went yeah it's like he used to always say because numbers weren't a problem for him he could get as many people in his college as possible but he would be like if you don't want to be here you can leave. And I know it sounds really harsh, but he's like, if you would rather go to university and do something else, mm. what the hell are you doing here? Why are you wasting your money on me? Mm. Like, and I think it's just checking in with yourself to make sure, is this still what I want to do? And if it, and if it is, great. Then, then that's your inspiration when you get rejected to be like, I'm going to work harder. Was I fully prepared? Yes. Then it's not that I can't do anything about that. Mm. Right. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that's yeah, that's just me anyway. Would you guys miss them? I mean, we're all stuck right now. We don't know when the theaters will be open. It brings me so much hope that Prince of Egypt has announced tickets again. Uh, okay. I'm so like, I don't know how. We don't know the information that's happening behind the walls of um, Ten Downing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm so glad when Prince of Egypt puts up that ad mm -hmm. saying selling mm -hmm. tickets again, I'm like, boom, that's the Dominion that has like 
5,000 people that can fit into the theater <laughs> or it feels like 5,000. That yeah. means something is going to be happening. Something good yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But what yeah. do you guys think the most about the practice? Sorry? What do you guys miss the most about, um, about work? I mean, what do you guys miss right now about theater and this industry that we love? I think I actually weirdly miss the routine. Um, it, my work structures my my day, yeah. um, and I've had to that routine just got wiped out, and I've had to create a completely different routine. Yeah. Um, and what I love about live theatre is the fact that, like Nick said, it's like three and a half hours of your day. Yeah, got the rest of your day free. You can go to the gym. Yeah. It's such a sociable job. Um, I'm very fortunate to be in London, so I can do a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I think I miss I miss the structure the most. I, 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 quite, I quite I work better on the structure. So I think when it got taken off initially, I was a bit like, Ugh. right. But then um, creating a new structure, you know, you learn to get, get by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Well, I guess it's not like if it was a job you hated, you probably wouldn't miss it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know people that don't work in theatre that love to sing in the shower or sing around home, they, that's just what they love doing. But we're lucky enough to have the same job that that we love. And so it's, yeah, you miss being on stage. You miss being on stage with your friends. You miss laughing in the dressing room, annoying people, as JP is very aware of. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the audience is getting to watch theatre because, you know, you don't know who's out there watching. Yeah. You or not you specifically, but watching the show or who would get inspired or that person like me that just randomly went to a showcase of a performance and went, yeah. holy crap, this is what I want to do. Like yeah. I'm thinking of all like the missed opportunities for people to see good theatre. Uh I mean I can't think of it that way because that's quite you know harrowing. But you know, there, there's a lot of people. Yeah. It's not a job that you take, 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 take. It's yeah. a job that gives. You give, yeah, exactly. So that's what I miss about it. Mm. Yeah, mm. I miss sharing the warmth of a common energy inside a structure. Whether mm. you're in the cast, you're part of a company, you're sharing with, you know, with the, with the technical staff, the dressers, the, the wardrobe, or if you're in the audience waiting for the show to begin. Just the warmth of your sharing this, it's, it's like church mm. almost. Where you're sharing this spirit, and I just miss that, really, really. And hopefully, and I think sooner than later, because the Dominion is selling tickets already to Prince of Egypt, we're all going to be back on stage doing the thing that we love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have time for some comments. Um, yeah, we we talked about the Swing Bible already, and and the different styles of Nick and Felipe. Any other oh, yeah. oh, yeah. um, stage right? And you, um, you basically yeah. put dots around. I mean, I don't have my iPad with me, but yeah, it, yeah. It's Say that again. So the, the app is called Stage. Stage right. Stage and right. Basically, set, it sets up your um, dimensions yeah. uh, for you of the screen, and you put it all in, and then each person right. like a dot, and then you can move people around and where set goes, and it shows all your positions on there. You know, I spent so long giving colors to people. I wish I knew about this app. Oh, oh, Felipe. Oh my God. Really helpful. And some people, yes. as in, some people like drawing, so it's just <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um, another comment. Would you ever do, I'll say yes to both of them. I think they've already done it. No. <laughs> Would you ever do gender bending roles? Yeah, of course. Uh, like, is it like going on for a, a female track? Um, no, I think the question is, would you do roles wherein it was originally a male, but um, I don't, gender roles? Yeah, I, th I think, no, that's I think would, you, would you go on, uh, I'm, I'm just going to cover all the bases. I'm not sure what the question is, but will you go on for drag? Will you go on as a woman? Would you do, go oh on God. as, as if it, if it came up and if it came about and I was the person that they most wanted? Yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be, I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 
that's the the beauty of theater i guess yeah as long as it's not like appropriating anything then absolutely why not yeah. uh right it's but yeah i don't know i don't really want to play a part i'll be happy to cover a part that's what i was going to say there's such a specific art to even drag that yeah. the wit they have to have is incredible yeah um so it's not something that will naturally come to me actually the re the respect i've had and developed for drag artists out here in the uk mm -hmm. it's a craft all on its own it's amazing like they're it's very unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's just uh putting on a wig and some no. makeup it's like yeah it's a whole thing Halloween, 31st of um, october putting on that <laughs> <laughs> um I, look, we're gonna wrap up in a bit um i remember this around this time last year nick we were in japan and oh, yes. we were in japan for king and i and you were feeling very fomo because you couldn't take part in all of the pride celebrations oh out here in london and yeah. here we are here we are all locked down how are you feeling how are you and patrick um celebrating this year or participating this year i i i we were speaking about it last night actually uh yeah. it's kind of you, you know, uh, pride gets like covered with uh you know the celebrations and the party and and you know going out and enjoying people and celebrating yeah. uh uh, all kind of like the commercial aspect of it but i think because we're all in lockdown now we've kind of turned our view and back to what why are we having pride in the first place where did it come from it's forcing us to talk have conversations that are like um you know uh, march are throwing the first the, the the thing at the mirror in the pub and you know why are we having why do we need pride so I guess it's kind of educating ourselves that a black trans woman started Pride and of course with all the Black Lives Matter, mm. Matter you know, protests and conversations that people are having, it's, it's kind of people are having to get educated and if you're not getting educated, you're, 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 you're everyone needs to, to get on board. That, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, what we, that's how we're celebrating Pride, educating ourselves. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very happy that in front of me right now on my screen are two amazing, apart from being amazing, talented actors and very, very generous with their time and their advice. It's also two actors of color that I share the screen with, and right now, and, and I'm so proud of that. Like, I'm so proud that we're at this time now in our history, wherein representation is no longer we're approaching at least the time where we don't know the idea is we're not no longer fighting for representation where it's already a norm you know what i mean mm -hmm. where people of color is absolutely normal it's more and a it's, thing now yeah it wasn't before um and i remember thinking i, I was like i wonder who the first latino person is going to be that i've uh, ever worked with and yeah. it was it it's a guy called hector and i wow that to me was so the fact that i could speak spanish at work and it yeah. wasn't a, it wasn't a thing that you wanted to have a private conversation on, but i don't get to do that yeah it was, it was so lovely i don't know what it was like if there were some nationalities in king and i where you were able to speak the same lingo and um, besides english um but to me being able to speak spanish that that was so lovely yeah i, I hope i get to do that again um i don't know i don't know if there's any of the spanish Oh, same as uh, Mambo. Mambo spoke Spanish too. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that is now being celebrated as before. Yes. It, you didn't get the opportunity. Um, and thinking about it, I think we're we're in a stronger position, which is a good thing. Um, yeah. It's moving, moving somewhere. We're, it's still in yeah. early days, but it's still moving. Definitely moving somewhere. Yeah, I think it's like we, we, I think we've still got a, a long way to go, mm -hmm. but at least. The conversations are happening now. It's not yeah. like, you know, it's not taboo to talk about it now. No. It's like yeah. at, at least we're having open conversations. Right. And Actual that's discourse that's can happen. Yeah. For, for it to get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Thank you, guys. Um, I learned a lot. I love picking your brains. Thank you for saying yes to to this. Um, any any like final advice or words of wisdom to someone that might be watching from either dance or drama school or from across the world, just wanting to be who look up to you guys and wanting to be where you guys are now. Come on, Nick. I know. <laughs> Come on. I mean, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, people get a lot of no's. I got a lot of no's when I was training. People used to laugh at me. Um, and that drove me. That drove me, and I'm so glad I stuck to it. You're right. always going to be doubted, and you are your biggest, um, your biggest insecurity. You know, you always doubt yourself. Can I actually do it? But if, if you just, you just genuinely have to persevere, and hopefully. Um, the right opportunity, you'll be at the right place at the right time. And then things from then on will eventually start to roll. It's not easy. Um, and I guess no one expected COVID. So I guess things get, curveballs get thrown in. But just keep at it. Keep at it. And now I know what a player is, which is good. It's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I never realised how similar we were, Felipe, without training stuff, like beginnings. But yeah, it's the same. But, but I feel like that's what makes you work harder. Yeah. I guess my uh, everything Felipe said, you know, just uh, all I want to add is that you you have to check in on yourself more than you think and have good people around you because mm -hmm. as important as our work is and that we love it, it can be very very toxic and you need to just you got to look after you so you can be the best you in your job and not the other way around. Right. That, yeah. Bring awesome. me that abundance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's Honestly, it's like self love is so important because there's so much more in the world for us to 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 have, and it's more than what, what we do. That's it. And just, and, and just being tethered and connected to people who are just willing to listen and being supportive of you is really important. I appreciate that. Early on in the lockdown, when I went to my 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 Instagram uh, blackout or red out. Felipe sent me a message saying, don't don't stay away too far. Just keep in touch, stay in touch. And that, that's massive. The little gestures like that really help you as a human being because we are humans first before we are actors. Thank okay. you. Definitely. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. If you guys want to follow Felipe or Nick, um, we're going to put up the social media stuff. Let's sit up. Oh my gosh. Insta. <laughs> Beharanom and Beharano. Beharano is his last name. I like that name. Yeah. Um, and Nick's. Yeah. Nick Lynn. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to leave everybody with just, uh, I feel like Ellen's generous. Be kind and take care of yourself. Um, we're almost there. We're six months into 2020, 2020 guys. Almost done. Crazy. First of July. Or almost done, guys. Just six more months, and this year is over. Thank you, there. Thank you. I have a very, very special guest next week. Um, three or four of them, actually, all at once. Really, really wow. excited. Yeah. Uh, Nick knows this. I'll announce it very, very soon. Um, very, very beautiful guests that are coming and talking to me next week. But I'm going to say goodbye and leave you with a really, really gorgeous, gorgeous video I found of Nick Len back when he auditioned for The Voice in Australia. Oh no, it's very old. Okay, I've come a long way. Let's just say <laughs> This is his oh, yeah. audition. Thank you very much, Felipe. Thank you very much, Nick. And thank Peace you. Around. See you guys next week. Bye. Oh, sorry, let me play this. And... Easy come, easy go, that's just how you live, oh, take, take, take it all, but you let me <laughs> Should have known you was trouble from the first kiss, had your eyes wide open Why are you talking when I give you all I had and you tossed it in the trash, you tossed it in the trash, you did. Oh my goodness to give me all your love is all I've ever had. What you don't understand is I can't grenade. Throw my head on the blade.
How gorgeous. You know I do anything for it's leading man stuff. Yeah, definitely. She got a chair. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know you did the voice. My palms are sweating at the thought of being in that room again. Oh, oh. my gosh. All right. You can't talk anymore about that. You guys can look up all of the Nick Len videos um, on YouTube. <laughs> I remember the top comment on that video was, oh, my God, he is so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and he is. You can also catch it. Felipe, weren't you in a movie recently? Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, you know. That was, I think yeah. that was. Oh, just Bohemian Rhapsody, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was in Bohemian Rhapsody. I remember seeing them. All right. Anyway, thank you guys. You take care of yourself. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Uh,